my God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. My God is awesome. Heal me when I'm broken. Strength where I've been weakened. Raise His holy name. My God is awesome. He's awesome. He's awesome.
to happy in Jesus. No language my rapture can tell. I know that the light of His presence with me does contain only well. Redeem, redeem, redeem by the blood of the Lamb. Redeem, redeem, His child and forever I am. I take for my blessed Redeemer. I worship
I know you set my feet upon the rock, and now I know. Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Today we will go back to our study of 2 Corinthians. We are in chapter 5 today. Chapter 5 of 2 Corinthians as we continue our verse by verse study of the Word of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We bow our heads in prayer. Father, we want to thank you today for this privilege that we can open up the Holy Scriptures. And Lord, you said, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God and give it to all men liberally. Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. Pray, O oh God, that our eyes and our ears will be open. Lord, I pray that you bless your people. O oh God, bless us with the ears of the lawn. O oh God, the mouth of the lawn so that we can speak, O oh God, your words accordingly, Lord. Let the word of God abide in our hearts richly. Bring healing in our bodies, in our soul, in our mind, in our spirit. Encourage our hearts as we listen to your words today. In Jesus' precious, wonderful name. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. So we are in chapter 5 of Second Corinthians. Uh, it tells us, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Now, we know that the Apostle Paul, he suffered a lot. In proclaiming the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Apostle Paul, his life was constantly under threat. And uh, he didn't know from day to day whether he was going to survive. You know, because... You know, the government was looking for him. Uh, even his own brethren, the Jewish people, you know, he antagonized them a lot of times and they tried to hurt him. They hurt him sometimes and they, he got away sometimes. But somebody was always out to get the Apostle Paul. His life was in danger. And if we remember what he said in chapter 3 of um, you know, uh, verse 16, he said, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Paul, he took so much abuse in his body. He was beaten so many times. He was stoned so many times. He was shipwrecked so many times. He experienced trouble from his own countrymen. When uh, he was in peril in the city, peril in the wilderness, everywhere he go, he was in danger. So because of that, his body was like it was worn out. The amount of uh, beatings and the amount of suffering that he experienced in his body, his body was weak, it seemed like, according to what he's saying here. For which cause we faint not. He wasn't going to quit, he wasn't going to give up, even though he was uh, abused by people. 
and he was feeling it in his body. He was taking a great toll upon his body. He still said, even though the outward man perish, yet the inward man will increase in strength. And I guess this is the basis on which Paul is speaking here in chapter 5. Having suffered so much and having, you know, uh, experiencing all of these things in his body and don't know when uh, death is going to come, he was able to write, the, uh, you know, in chapter 5 here, for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle, what he's saying here, if our earthly house, he's not talking about the house that you live in, he's not talking about your physical house, but what he's talking about, the body, he's saying if our earthly house of this tabernacle is dissolved. Now what he's talking about there, what he's saying, he's calling his body, he's saying that our body is a tent. And uh, we all know a tent is something that is temporary. And what he's saying, the body that we live in, because somebody described um, man in this way, he said man is a spirit, he have a soul, and he live in a body. We live in a body. But what Paul is saying here is that our body is a tent. And we all know when you put up a tent, a tent is something that is temporary. You can put up a tent and you can... Uh, let that tent stay for a month, let it stay for three months, but after a while you're going to take that tent down. It's like, if you remember the children of Israel, when they were going through the wilderness, they were camping, and they put up their tent, and when the Lord says it's time for them to move, um, they will move from one place to another. Remember the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says, the Son of God became flesh, and He tabernacled among us, He dwelled among us. That is what the word tabernacle, dwell. He was living in an earthly tent. He put on an earthly suit. Even the apostle Peter, he said, while I am in this tabernacle, I will remind you, I will store up your pure mind because the Lord have given him um, warning or told him that the time will come when he will have to put off this tabernacle. So Peter, even him, he was making preparation to leave this tabernacle. So what Paul is saying is that our body is a tent and it's not permanent. Praise the name of the Lord. We only live in this body for a certain period of time. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We occupy this body for a certain period of time. And Paul is letting us know, for we know this is not something that we dream of. You know, if you uh, discourage, you know, when we are sick and we are experiencing difficulty in our bodies and all of us have difficulties in our bodies it doesn't matter how strong and healthy you are every one of us don't pastor don't who looking big and strong and fat <laughs> i don't put that in <laughs> i have health problem i have problem with my body you know uh, your body is just like a vehicle sometimes you on the highway and you boy this vehicle running so sweet <laughs> and the next time you go back again the vehicle something wrong with it it's just so the body is so every one of us, we have health issues in our bodies. Doesn't matter how much, how much you know, how we look. Some of us um, health issues are more severe than some. But when you experience, you know, difficulties in your body, this is a, a, a passage of scripture that can give us consolation to help us to understand that our body is just a tent. It is a temporary thing. Hallelujah! For we know. We know that if our um, earthly house of this tabernacle or this tent is dissolved, what Paul is saying is that if with all of the suffering that he was facing, if his body fall apart or if they, they, they chop him to pieces, because that was a possibility, they could have cut him to pieces or you know, he could have experienced um, death from the hands of the government in that time or some of the people who was um, attacking him. If his body is dissolved, and what, when he talks there about dissolve, he's talking about death. If death should come, through the cause of him preaching the, the message of salvation, he's saying that death could come. And somebody will say, well, Paul, if you know that preaching the word of God was putting your life in jeopardy, why don't you just back off a little bit? Why don't you tone down your preaching a little bit? Instead of, you know, preaching in this kind of way, and you know when you preach 
in this kind of way you aggravate the people. You, you have to save yourself. Tone down your preaching a little bit and don't be so aggressive in your preaching. The Apostle Paul did not tone down his preaching. Even when he knew that people would, you know, was looking for him and he would have, you know, he could get, get, get killed, he still continued to preach the Word of God. You know, he said to Timothy, preach the Word in season and out of season. Reprove and re- rebuke with all long suffering and doctrine. You know, I remember what he said to Timothy over in 2 Corinthians, uh, 2 uh, Timothy chapter 4. He said, for I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. When he said offer, he's talking about death, he's talking about dying. He said, I'm now ready to be poured out like a drink offering. His blood was about to be poured out as a drink offering. I'm now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I've fought a good fight. Hallelujah. I've finished my course. I've kept the faith. And henceforth is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. And not for me only, but for all those who love the very appearing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle was dissolved, brethren, unless the Lord tarries, all of us will come to that when our earthly house, our earthly tabernacle, we will leave this house. You know, maybe some of us only have another 10 years in our tent. Some people probably have 20 years in their tent, 25 years in their tent. We don't know how long we have in this tent. But the thing is, it, it's a tent. And uh, we, it, it's temporary. And we have to live in this kind of way because it's temporary. You know what um, Abraham said? Uh, according to what Hebrews tell us, Father Abraham said, I was looking for a city that had foundation, whose builder and ruler is God. Abraham knew that he was living in a tent. He wasn't just only living in a physical tent because, you know, Abraham didn't have brick and mortar kind of house. He, had, he was living in tent. But f- spiritually and physically, in, he, he, he was, his uh, body was a tent. And he knew that that wasn't going to last forever. And it's the same thing we are facing today. Hallelujah. He said, we have a building of God. So when the time comes for us to leave this tent, this temporary tent, we are going to go to a building of God. A building is more permanent. A building is something that is permanent in comparison to a tent. When you look at a tent, a a tent is temporary that you can put up and take down. But when you put up a building, a building is permanent. And what he's saying here. Uh, This building that God is preparing for us, it's going to be permanent. It's a building. We have a building of God. It is a building of God. And house made, not made, uh, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Jesus said in Matthew, in John chapter 14, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, if it were not so I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Brethren, this house that God is telling us here about, it is a house that is in heaven. We have a building of God, a house not made with hands. All of the houses, all of the buildings that we have today, are building that is made with hands. And when you make something with hands, it, mean, it means that that thing can be uh, destroyed. But this building that Paul is talking about, the one that is in heaven, is something that man did make. <laughs> you know, we have some good carpenters and some good bricklayers and stuff like that. But it's not any um, carpenter or any bricklayer that put down that um, structure. This is a building that is made by God. There's a lot of discussion over... What kind of building is Paul talking about? Was he talking about the body? Was he talking about that body that the Lord is going to give to us? Was he just talking about heaven in itself? And there's discussion on that. But I believe that he's talking here about heaven and also a body could be employed. Because the thing is, when we leave our tent, and when we say leave our tent, we're talking about dying. And not, we're not supposed to be afraid of dying. We don't really um, eager to die. 
But what we eager, we eager to receive what comes after death. We don't really ready to rush into death. But if death comes, brethren, as children of God, we're not supposed to be afraid. A Christian not supposed to be afraid when the time come to die. When the time come to die, we're supposed to, um, the Bible said, blessed in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his saints. You know, it's supposed to be a blessedness. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You read in the Bible and you see when Jacob ready to go, you know, he get up on his couch and he stood up and he gave his blessing to his children. We as children of God, we have to be pre- prepared. We have to be ready. Glory be to God. I mean, say we're not going to take our own life. But glory be to God, there is a better place out there for us. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory be to God. So what he's saying is that it's a house not made with hands. And this thing is eternal in the heavens. We might only last in this tent for maybe 80 years. The Bible said, you know, if you, by reason of strength, you live past 80 years, you should be giving God thanks. So we might only stay in this tent for about 80 years. Some people less. But the tent, but the house that the Lord is going to give to us, it is something that is going to last forever. Glory be to God. There is no end to that. So he could be talking about the body that we will get from him. Or he could be talking about heaven in itself. Because when we leave uh, this body, we are not going to go in heaven and stay without a body. Some people think that, you know, um, people in heaven, they will be without bodies. And you will just be a, a, a disembodied spirit. You, you will be a spirit uh, without a body. Or some people think that you will be in a trance or you will just go uh, like your soul sleep. But that is not what the Bible said. The Bible said to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. When the time comes for we to leave here, when the time comes that death should um, take any one of us, as soon as we leave this life, we end up in heaven in the presence of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And glory be to God, it is better to be with Christ. Hallelujah. Than being here. Glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So hear what he said in verse 2. For in this we groan. And uh, when, he, when he's talking here about groaning, he's not saying that, uh, I know he was in pain and he was experiencing suffering. But the, the groan that he's talking there about, what he's saying is that he's eager. There was, there was an eagerness. You know, in Paul, he was eager to, 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 to get to that uh, place to inherit all of that blessing that the Lord um, prepared for him. As I said, he wasn't eager for dying. It's not to say he, he, he wished to die. But what he's saying is that if death comes, there is something that follows death. And what follows death is the reward that God is going to give to all of his children. So for in this we groan, honestly, desiring to be clothed upon, With our house which is from heaven. So he's saying that honestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. He have an honest expectation. He just have a desire, hallelujah, to be clothed upon. He want to receive that heavenly uh, house or garment that the Lord is providing for him. Praise God. And Paul, as I say, he was going through a lot of trials and temptation and hardship. And uh, he was being attacked. His life was in jeopardy all the time. And it seemed as though he just wanted to, you know, move on to be with the Lord. And you know, sometimes when you look at what is taking place today in this world, if we will be honest, this world is not a place that is really uh, exciting to really be in anymore. 30 years ago, you know, I could have looked back and said, well, here used to be a nice place to, to really be. But, you know, uh, if you really look at it, what is taking place in the world today, this world is not a nice place to be in anymore. You know, sometimes if you turn on the radio, you can't even turn on the radio. If, if you want to get depressed, turn on the radio. All you're hearing about is killing and you're hearing about terrorism. And you're hearing about this one attacking this one. This one did that. And uh, all we can hear about today is bad news. Praise the name of the Lord. And that's the reason why, brethren, we have to be excited about that paradise, that the heaven that the Lord is preparing for us. 
as I said, we are not rushing into death. This is not to say somebody rushing to, to, to get killed. This is not what Paul is saying. But Paul is saying is that it could happen. We could get killed or we could die. But when we die, there is something better awaiting us. Praise the name of the Lord. So he was groaning. He was excited. He was, he honestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. He was saying that when the time comes, God is going to clothe him. He's not going to be just a spirit when he gets to heaven. He will have a body. Praise God. Uh, he said in verse 3, If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. So what he's saying is that we are not going to be found naked. And as I said, there were some of those philosophers in Paul's time who were saying that when the spirit leaves, uh, this body, the spirit will re- be naked, the spirit will be without a body. And Paul is saying, when we leave this tent, we are not going to be naked. Praise the name of the Lord. In uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul said, um, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. For he said, This corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal shall put on immortality. So then when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who have given us the victory. Through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. In verse 4. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. You know, it's the, that's, that's the same scripture I just quote there. Paul is saying is that we are not anxious to just to die, but what we are anxious about or what we are eager to receive is the, 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 the blessing that the Lord prepared for us in heaven. It, it's what comes after death that we are excited about. And I love what he said in the, in the, uh, the, the end of this word. He says, for, for, he said we, we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of, of life. You know what mortality is? Mortality means something that is mortal. When you say mortality, you're talking about something that is subject to dying, something that is subject to pain. It is uh, your body, and your body is subject to pain, and your body is subject to dying. And what Paul is saying is that when uh, the time comes, this mortal body will be swallowed up. Life is going to take over this body. Glory be to God. The Zoe of God. Hallelujah. This is life eternal, that we should know Him, the true God, and Jesus Christ his son, his life will just swallow up this mortal body that we are experiencing here. Hallelujah. There is no thing in the word of God that says we have to go and wait in purgatory. Anybody here want to go and wait in purgatory? There is no purgatory for the children of God. When a child of God leaves this body, he gone straight to meet the Lord Jesus Christ. The same place where Jesus is, is the same place born again believers is going to go. Remember on uh, Mount, uh, uh, the Mount of Olive, when Jesus was taken up, hallelujah, the angel saw the disciples looking up, and he said, Oh, men of Galilee, what are you gazing up into the sky for? He said, The same Jesus that you see, hallelujah, leave, he will return in like manner. Jesus, when he leave this earth, he was taken up, hallelujah. He went back to his home. He went back to heaven. And it's the same place, brethren, we will go when the time comes. For us to leave this tent. Glory be to God. Some people are very afraid of die, at death. Some people take death. And I know we have to mourn. And don't take it wrong with, with what I'm saying. But you know. When we have a death in our family. We have to be careful how we mourn. We have to mourn. Because in the Bible you see Joseph. He cried about his father for some days. And stuff like that. But. Especially when you know that person gone to meet the Lord. The Bible tells us that we're not supposed to moan like people who don't have no hope. You know, you moan and like, you know, like people, because it's, I know we can't get accustomed with, with death. Doesn't matter how many times death occurred in your family. When it happened again, 
you know, you, you're going to feel it. But as a child of God, we have to know that we have hope. Glory be to God. You're going to miss your husband, but you, you have hope that you're going to see him again. You're going to miss your wife, but you have hope that you're going to see him again. Once the both of you are on the same pathway, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, mortality will be sorted up with life. Glory to God. This mortal body, this mortal tent, life is going to swallow it up. Hallelujah. In verse 5, he said, Now he that had wrought us or work us or prepare us for this self same thing is God. So what Paul is saying is that I didn't prepare this for myself. It's not me who set this up. It's nothing I have done to have this thing um, prepared. It's God who prepared this. And when God prepares something, it's going to be accomplished. Hallelujah. Whatever God do something, it can't fail. God can't fail. God can't lie. Can't change. And his words remain the same. So it is God who prepared this thing. It is God who set this thing up. It is God who built the foundation of this thing. Hallelujah. So it's on a solid footing. It's on a solid foundation. Hallelujah. Who also had given unto us the honest of his spirit. Now this is a very powerful verse of scripture. And this should mean a lot to us. And what the interpretation of this scripture is telling us is that God has given us the honest of his spirit, and the honest there, the word honest there means a down payment. And it's a deposit. You know, I don't know if they still have these stores where uh, people, especially the ladies, they go around and they shop and they see a dress that they like, and you don't have enough money, you put on a $10 or $5 on it, you make a down payment. And they take your name, and you'll go back when you have a $2 or a $5 or whatever they require, and you'll go back and you'll keep on paying for that dress or whatever the thing is. And when you finish paying for it, it belongs to you. What Paul is saying here, God give us the Holy Spirit as a down payment on all of the promises that the Lord made to us. You believe that you have the Holy Spirit? You believe that the Holy Spirit is real? So if the Holy Spirit is real, all of those promises that the Lord made to us, like the promise of resurrection... The promise of going to heaven. The promise of spending eternity with the Lord. All of those promises will be fulfilled because of the fact that God has given us the Holy Spirit as a down payment. And what he said is that all those other promises that he made to us, they will be fulfilled. But the Holy Spirit is a down payment towards all of the fulfillment of these promises. So that is what he's saying here. He has given unto us the earnest of his spirit. Holy Spirit is a down payment. The Holy Spirit is not all that God has for us. It is not the best that God has for us. I know when the Holy Spirit comes upon us, we get excited, we shout and we jump and we dance and stuff like that and we feel so good on the inside. But the Holy Spirit, it is just a taste of what God has in store for us. The Bible tells us, I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor have it entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for them that love Him. But He has revealed them unto us by the same Holy Spirit that we are talking about here. Uh, in the Psalms He said, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in Him. Brethren, I want to say to you, there is a lot in store for us today. There's a lot in store. God has a lot in store for us. And we have too much to gain to lose. This is not the time for us to quit. This is not the time for us to throw in the towel. Somebody say, Pastor Duncan, you don't see much people who used to come to church and they're not coming to church anymore. So if they want to drop out, let them drop out. Every person will have to stand before God. And we will have to give an account to God, you know, for all the deeds done in our life, brethren. So if somebody wants to drop out, don't use that as any excuse to, for you to drop out. You have to keep on going. Hallelujah. Every person, hallelujah, will stand before God. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible tells us that God is not mocked. Hallelujah. Praise God. He is not mocked and he will reward every person according to his word shall be. So brethren, we can't look at other people. Hallelujah. We have to keep on following the Lord. We have to keep on running the race that is set before us. 
For the race is not for the swift, nor the battle for the strong, but it's for he that endure to the end. You know, sometimes you see some people come in the church and, oh, they're so excited. Show me where I can accept Jesus Christ. I want to know where I can find Jesus. And they will run to the altar. They accept Christ as their Lord and Savior. And man, I tell you, they're so happy. You know, before the church opened, they're there and they're ready to go. Man, I tell you, they're up front and they're singing and they're rejoicing and they're speaking in tongues. And everything's so rosy and dandy. And whoa, like just a breeze. Gone. That is, brethren, Christianity. Is a lifetime thing. Amen. It is just like when you, be, when, when, you, when, you, when you take somebody as your husband or your wife. When you take a man as your wife, uh, as your husband, sorry. You take a woman as your wife. It's for life. Christianity is not a short term thing. It is a long distance race. It's a race when you're going through the valley. It's raining. It's, you know, sun. You know, you're thirsty. You're climbing the mountains. You, 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 you meet up with the rocky place. It is, you still have to go. You can't quit. Christianity is not when things are going good, when things are working out, and everything is all right on your side. You're making good money. Your wife uh, is treating you good. Your husband is treating you good. And you feel like going on. No, you got to go on when your wife's not behaving right, when your husband not behaving right, when your children not behaving right. You still got to go on. Hallelujah. You know, when you stand before Jesus, we won't be able to use the excuse and say, Lord, you know, is that wife, you know, that wife, you see that woman, I give me that woman, that woman give me hell, you know, every time I try to serve you, she always behind me. Or oh, that man you give me, that man always do it, and you're always doing this, and you put the blame on the man, like Adam uh, put the blame on Eve. We can't put the blame on nobody. Every one of us will have to stand before God, and we'll have to give an account. So you can't make nobody cause you to quit. You have to keep on moving. Hallelujah. Said, praise God. In verse 6. Therefore, we are always confident. What Paul is saying here, we are always confident. Glory be to God. Because we have the, 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 um, the honest of his spirit. We have that down payment. We have the deposit. It's like buying a house. And you have a good down payment. You put... Let's say you buy a house that costs three hundred thousand dollars, and you could put down a hundred thousand. You put a good investment in, and you're excited. You know, somebody who probably put a five percent down, they don't have a lot of confidence as you. And what Paul is saying here, we have enough invest in this thing. The Holy Spirit is given to us by God. Hallelujah! And this is a big investment. So because of that, we are confident. Therefore, we are always confident, not just some of the time. We are always confident. And what he's saying is that we are bold. We are courageous. We as children of God, brethren, we're supposed to be courageous. We're supposed to be like Joshua. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. When Moses was about to leave, he encouraged Joshua. He said, be courageous. Be not dismayed. I am the Lord thy God. I am with thee. I will never leave thee. I will never forsake thee. Glory be to God, brethren. We must be courageous. And what uh, he's saying here, cheer up. I'm saying to you, it doesn't matter what we, you are going through today. Cheer up, brethren. Hallelujah. Cheer up. Even though you don't have anything in your glass to cheer up with, still cheer up. Be encouraged. Glory. Hallelujah. Therefore, we are always confident. Confident. Knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. So, while we are alive... We are absent from the physical presence of God. We know God is with us. We know the Lord Jesus Christ is with us. But while we are here in this body, we can't see the Lord. We can't touch the Lord. We can't sit at his feet and all of that because we are in the body. But the time will come when we will be at his feet, where we will be in the presence of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Brethren, we can't let sight, we can't let the things that we hear and the things that we are seeing, you know, um, dictate our actions. A lot of times we hear things and we get so upset and we get so afraid. And brethren, it doesn't matter what you hear. You have the Word of God. The Word of God is more powerful than what you're hearing. 
You can't make ISIS scared you. Oh, I don't want to. Oh, I hope ISIS don't come here. Will they come? If they want to come, let them come. We have the word of God. The word of God never leave us. You know, ISIS is in uh, Iraq and Syria and all these places. It have born again people over there, you know. Those born again people, uh, they're not running away from no ISIS. ISIS killing some of them. ISIS abusing uh, uh, some of them, beating them up, abusing them, and, uh, and uh, burning down their houses and their churches. But these people are still there. You know, look at some of the people they were saying this week in the um, Syrian refugee camp. They conduct a survey and they try to see how much people want to come to Canada. You guys over here say, oh, we don't want them to come. The people don't want to come here either. What is it? It's only 6%. It's only 6% of the people that they have in the refugee camp want to come to Canada. Most of the people saying that they want to stay in the area. So when things are normalized in their country, they want to go back in their country. Because the people that, before the war start, they had it good, they had it better than most of us here. So they don't really want to come here. So um, those of you who say, oh, I don't want them to come here, they don't want to come either. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. So what I'm saying is that we got to walk by faith. You have to live according to the word of God. Brethren, sometimes your situation, you know, uh, it will go crosswise to what the word of God say. But you still have to hold on to the word of God. You have to hold to the word of God. Glory be to God. The brother talked about his wife suddenly found out that she don't have a job. She had to hold to the word of God still. God still say he's our provider. He still say you'll never leave us. You'll never forsake us. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. He still say you'll make it the head and not the tail. He'll bless you in your going out and in your coming in. Whatever your hands touch, it shall be blessed. Those are the word of God. And that is what it means for us to live by faith. Don't live by sight, brethren. Hallelujah. Oh, sometimes, you know, things start looking good. And people say, well, I just know things are going to work out. Things are going to work out. Why? Because they've seen all the physical signs, you know. And uh, when uh, things change, you're not seeing no physical signs. You know, it looks like when you look down, you see as though rain coming or thunder or lightning coming. Oh boy, the whole world is going to fall apart. I don't know what we're going to... You have to stand. You have to stand by faith. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Tells us in verse 8, we are confident. So they're bold, they're courageous. We have to be bold in the face of all what happened in the world today, brethren. We have to be bold. We have to be courageous. We have to stand strong, hallelujah, steadfast and movable. Don't give up the faith. I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. So Paul is saying here, with all what was going on and all what is taking place in his time, he was confident and he was willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Can you genuinely say that? Can we say that today? Can you say, you know, if the time comes for me to go and meet the Lord, I'm ready to go. Anybody here ready to go and meet the Lord? <laughs> it's like somebody sing the song, everybody want to go to heaven but nobody want to die. You know, uh, I'm going to go and leave my nice Honda Pilot behind. I'm going to go and leave my, my nice um, SUV Lexus behind. You know, I'm going to go on that house I just paid for and I just move into. I'm going to leave it behind. Brethren, it doesn't matter what you have here where material things is concerned. Things on this earth cannot be compensated. You can't measure it with the things that is in heaven. Glory be to God. It's far away. Uh, the things that we have here. What we have here is petty. When a person leaves this life and go to meet the Lord, it's like somebody who living in, in the slum. Somebody who living on the garbage dump. And somebody say, uh, come man, I, I have a bill of mansion for you man. It's time for you to leave this place. You don't even want the clothes that you have. <laughs> you leave everything behind. And you're gone to live in that mansion that is prepared for you. When we leave this earth, is leaving a slum. It's a slum. It's a tent we live in. And we are going to live with Jesus in his mansion. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We are not excited about death, but we are excited about what follows after death. What is going to take place. And yes, death is going to come. After a while, death is going to come. 
Praise the Lord. If we continue to live, brethren, death is going to come. If you continue to, to live, you know you're going to suffer something. If you continue to live, the only, the only way you're not going to suffer anything is if you die right now. And nobody don't want to die right now. So if you choose to keep on living, you are going to suffer something in life. Something is going to come in your life. You're going to suffer some kind of grief. Some loved one is going to pass away. Somebody's going to make some kind of mistake. Somebody's going to do something that is wrong that it will cause you grief. Once you're alive, you're going to experience these things in your life, brethren. But we have to be prepared. We have to still maintain our faith. Hold on to our faith. As the Bible said, Job, he held on to his integrity. Job, whole world fall apart. All, there's a wind that came in and destroyed the homes where all his kids were. All of his animals gone. Everything that he had gone. The only thing he had was that wife of his. <laughs> and she said, to, she was gone too. Because she said to him to curse God and die. But the Bible tells us that the man Job, he held on to his integrity. Holding on to your integrity is trusting God. You believe God. You're living by faith. You're not going to give up. It doesn't matter what the situation said to you. You still believe God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. In closing, in verse 9, he said, Wherefore we labor. Uh, the word labor, I know it, it kind of saying to work too, but what the original word labor mean? It means to become ambitious. That is what it means in the original text. He's saying that we must become ambitious. When you say somebody in ambitious, when you young ladies look at a man and say, oh, I want him to be my husband, you know, he's ambitious. What you're saying is that he have goals and he want to, he have a desire to go forward to succeed. And what Paul is saying here, we must, in the face of all of this, in, the, in light of all what he just said to us here, He's saying that we have to become ambitious for God. Hallelujah. We have to set our goal, set our eyes, looking on to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Become ambitious for the Lord. That whether present or absent, we may be accepted of Him. So Paul is saying whether you are in the body when Jesus comes, or you are out of the body, whether you are caught up in the rapture, or you passed away by death, Paul is saying that we will be accepted. And the word they accept means to receive. It means that God will be pleased with us. Brethren, that is all we are trying to do. We want the Lord to be pleased with us. As Jesus said, uh, uh, those people who obey him, um, he will say to them, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have done that which I have commanded you. Brethren, whatever it takes to please the Lord, we have to make the sacrifice. Glory be to God. I know sacrificing for the Lord is not something that is in fashion today. Everybody wants everything easy and serving God is not easy. Serving God is a sacrifice. If you serve in the Lord and everything is easy and man, I tell you, man, I'm just enjoying it and everything is just easy, you know, man. Better roses, you know, everything, your way is just paved. <laughs> you better check to see if you're not serving Satan. Anybody who's serving the Lord, Satan is going to make it his business to make their way rough. Things are going to become hard at times. Sometimes you might tell yourself, well, am I really serving the Lord? And you'll hear that voice saying, we don't just quit. We don't just throw in the towel and give up. But brethren, you got to keep on going. you got to keep on running the race that is set before us. Looking on to Jesus, the author and the finisher. Of our faith. Amen. We give God thanks. I'm going to ask the musicians to come back. Praise the Lord. We'll sing a song. At the end of the song, if you need to make your request before the Lord, you need to come to God and strengthen yourself, consolidate yourself, anchor yourself more in Him. At the end of this song, anybody need a prayer can come. Can somebody put that song on? Um, I want to be a worker. For the Lord, praise the Lord. <laughs> somebody, somebody help us slide this song up. <laughs> 